Hello, greetings, and welcome. I'm Brian Posey, and in this video, I want to show you how to make your own custom PowerShell commandlets by using modules. Now, the idea of creating a custom PowerShell commandlet probably sounds complicated and like it might be the sort of thing that only a developer would be able to do, but that's actually not the case at all. Microsoft actually makes it really easy to create your own PowerShell commandlets, and in this video, I'll show you how that's done. So if you look at the screen right now, you can see a PowerShell script that I've created. And the contents of the script are actually kind of irrelevant, but that's okay. I just want to take a look at the script. At the very beginning, you'll notice that we have a function. And that function is called generate-password. And if I scroll down to the end of the script, you can see that the function ends right here. And there's nothing else in the script, so we don't have a script body. So what that means is that this script isn't going to do anything by itself because there's no code in here to call the function. So if, for example, I were to minimize this window and then try to run this script, you can see that absolutely nothing happens. So in order to make that script do something, we need to add a function call to it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And calling a function in PowerShell is a simple process. All we have to do is type the name of the function, which in this case is just generate password. So I'll type generate dash password. And if I scroll up to the top for a second, you can see that generate dash password is the name of the function. Now, if we look just below that, you can see that we have a param section. The param section dictates the parameters that get passed to the function. And in this case, we have one parameter that gets passed. It's an integer, hence the int, and the variable associated with this integer is dollar sign $length. So we're passing the desired password length to this function, and then the function will return a password. So let's go ahead and add that in. So I'm going to add dash length, and I'll enter 12 as the password length. Now, one more thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a variable. I'll call this password out, and I'll set that equal to the name of the function and the parameter that we're passing to the function. And then I'm going to add one more line of code, dollar sign password out. And this line of code is simply going to display the password out variable's contents. And what the contents of that variable should be is the password that was generated by the function. So let me go ahead and save this. And then I'm going to switch back over to PowerShell. So let's try running the script again. I'll go ahead and press enter. And what we get this time is a 12 character password that was generated by the function within our script. So easy enough. Now, in this case, that function does exactly what it's supposed to do, but it's not the sort of thing that we can use as a standalone commandlet. Because remember, that function is embedded within a script. That function name is generate-password. And if I were to try to call that function directly, you can see that I get an error. And the reason for that is that PowerShell doesn't know that that function even exists. The function is embedded in a script. So the only way that PowerShell would know that that function exists is if we were to run the script containing the function and have a line of code within that script to call the function, just like what I showed you a moment ago. So with that said, let me switch back to the script. Now here we are in the script, and if I scroll up to the top, you'll notice that the function name is generate-password. One of the things about this function name is that I've formatted it in the typical PowerShell commandlet convention. So PowerShell commandlets are typically a verb, a dash, and a noun. So in this case, we have a verb, generate, we have a dash, and then we have a noun, password. So this is structured just like a PowerShell commandlet. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and turn generate-password into a standalone commandlet. Now, before I do that, I just want to mention that I named this particular function in a way that would adhere to the normal PowerShell commandlet structure. You don't necessarily have to do that. As a best practice, it's a good idea to name your functions in a way that mimics PowerShell commandlets, but you don't have to. If I were to simply give this function a different name, it would work just as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and turn this into a standalone commandlet. So the first thing that I want to do is just save a separate copy of this file. 
So I'll go to File, I'll go to Save As, and let's just call this Generate Password. And I'm going to set the encoding to ANSI. Now, you'll notice that when we save this, the extension is PS1. That's the extension that's typically used by PowerShell scripts. In order to create a standalone commandlet, we need to create a module. And modules use a different file extension. They use PSM1. So I'm just going to modify the extension. I'll change this from PS1 to PSM1. And then I'll save my changes. So we've created a PowerShell module file. But this module file is incomplete. If I were to try to enter generate password as a commandlet, it still wouldn't work at this point. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Because if you think about it, all we've done is we've taken a PowerShell script and we've renamed it. That's it. So we need to do just a little bit more work. But having said that, the process is super simple. So let me scroll down to the bottom of this file. And I'm going to get rid of those two lines of code that we created earlier. Now, as you'll recall, those two lines of code were designed to call the function and then display the output. We don't have to worry about any of that because remember, we're taking the function and we're turning it into a standalone commandlet. So we don't have to have a command embedded in our script to call the function because once this is turned into a standalone commandlet, we'll be able to call it anytime we want from outside of the script. So we don't need that command that is going to call the function on our behalf. What we do need, however, is a command that tells PowerShell that we're creating a module. So what I'm going to do is go down to the very bottom of the script, and then I'll type export dash module member. And then space. And then dash function. And then I need to specify the name of the function. And again, my function is called generate-password. So what I've done, I've created a PowerShell module file, and that module file contains a function. And then we've got a line at the end of the file saying export module member function generate password. Now, in this particular case, we're creating one standalone commandlet, and that commandlet is going to be generate password. Now, Typically, a module will contain numerous commandlets. And the way that that's done is by creating multiple functions within a single file. And if you do that, you'll need a separate export module member statement for every function that you create. Let me go ahead and save this. And then I'm going to close out Notepad. Now, if I were to try to call the generate password commandlet right now, and press Enter, we'll get an error. And the reason for that is that even though we've created a module and we've put the module in the correct format, there's still two things that we need to do. We need to save the module to the correct location. And then the other thing that we have to do is import the module. So let's start by moving the module to the correct location. So here's the module file that I created. And I'm just going to right click on this file and I'll choose copy. And then I'm going to go to C colon and then I'll go to Program Files. Next, I'll go to Windows PowerShell, and then Modules. And then the next thing that we have to do is we have to create a folder that corresponds to the name of the module file that we've created. Now, the module file was called Generate Password without the dash. So I'm going to create a folder called Generate Password. And the reason why I didn't use the dash is because the module file that we created doesn't use a dash in the file name. The file name is generatepassword.psm1. So let me go ahead and create the folder. And then I'll go into the folder. And then we need to paste that module file. So we've now put the module file into the correct location. So let me go ahead and switch back over to PowerShell. So I'm going to repeat the generate password command once again, and I'll press enter. And this time I get a password. Now, why did that happen? Because I mentioned a moment ago that you have to import the module. Well, some of the newer versions of PowerShell are smart enough that they can import a module automatically if you try to enter an unrecognized command. But older versions of PowerShell don't do that. 
So if I were running an older version of PowerShell, then what I would have to do is type import module space and then the name of the module, which in this case is generate password. And then I would press enter and then PowerShell would go ahead and import that module. Now you often find that the process of importing a module will generate a warning message, particularly in Windows 11, and you don't have to worry about this warning message. This is just there for informational purposes. But once the module has been imported, then you can use the name of that function that exists within the module file that you've created as a standalone PowerShell commandlet. Because in this case, I type generate-password-length12, but what if I just type generate password? It sure looks like a PowerShell commandlet. If I press enter, I get a bunch of error messages. Let me go ahead and escape out of this. And the reason why I get those error messages is twofold. The main reason is because I didn't pass a required parameter to the function. In this case, the function is generate password and the required parameter is the password length. In this case, I have length-12. I could change this to something else. I could type length 20. The other reason why I got all of the error messages is simply because the function was created quickly and it doesn't have any error handling built into the function. If I were building this for production use, then yes, I would probably go ahead and build something in there to handle any errors that occur. At any rate, I just wanted to show you how to take a PowerShell function and turn that into a standalone commandlet that you could use at will. Now, one more thing that I want to quickly show you is that in this case, I've typed generate password dash length 20 and I get a password on the screen. That's great, but what if I wanted to use this within the context of a PowerShell script? Well, what we could do in a situation like that is simply map a variable to the function that we're calling. So for example, I could type dollar sign password equals generate password dash length 20 and press enter. And now if I type dollar sign password, you can see that the password that was generated by the function is mapped to that variable. At any rate, that's how you turn a PowerShell function into a standalone PowerShell commandlet by creating a module file. I'm Brian Posey. Thanks for watching.